Right, this is an item I got from uh, Robert Tapak Technologies. It's a high voltage probe um, for an oscilloscope. This is just on loan for purpose of review. Um, I thought, you know, he offered it to me to have a look back while I was picking up the uh, SDS 14, uh, sorry, 1104 XE scope for, tr for uh, review. And he said, hey, you can kind of take it over this, take it away and have a look. So, here's the specs. Right, so it's got a thousand to one ratio and allows quite high voltages. Alright, <laughs> um, yeah, the specs also on the back of the, of the sleeve there too, but and on the front, All right? So, 8 kV, 40 megahertz, seen other basic measurements there, so um, DC to 40 megahertz. Accuracy, you know, a few percent, two or three percent. So the theory is this will allow you to make, um, you know, safer, vo high voltage measurements. Now it's still referenced to ground, so you have to be a little bit careful with that regard, um, and you have to make sure you earth it as well as it mentions the operation. All right, so you have to clip the alligator clip to a good ground. Um, in order to get that division ratio and other stuff like that, otherwise it might not actually, you know, work nicely. Um, so it's got this tip on here, which I think screws in. All right, and it comes with these as well. So you've got different options for um, attaching the probe. The high voltage stuff isn't something I I'd normally have anything to do with. Um, it sort of came up because I was mentioning about you know working on power supplies and stuff like that. So it's um, I'm getting to the bag. The bag seems to be like welded shut. Come on, open. It's like a. It's ridiculous. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Welded shut bag. That's not helpful, is it? Okay. So in here we have a hook probe, so instead of having the tip, you can screw this one instead, get them lined up right, there we go. So if you're measuring high voltage circuit, you can hook it on, but it's hang from it. Right. Um, there's also this other one here, which looks like it's, um, it's quite interesting, it goes on there like so. I'm not sure what you'd use this one for. Um, don't know, maybe it's for probing on um, contactors or something, or something like that, or you know, circuit breakers, maybe, I don't know. Fuses, getting into those gaps underneath something, maybe you can just screw it down, I don't know. Anyway, so. Oh, this boot looks rather similar to like one of these boots. Hmm. Anyway, um, so yeah, earth probe, earth clip which has to be earthed. So yeah, it's got a few options on there. As far as uh, I'm always extremely hesitant to connect anything high voltage up to an oscilloscope. You know, it's one of these things that I just don't want to go there <laughs> because you don't want to risk blowing it up. Um, but that's what this probe is designed to for. So it's um, that's its purpose. So I might do some testing, but it's supposed to be a thousand to one. Um, it does have compensation or adjustment in there. You know, I did anything plug on something and try it out. So actually, I'm going I'm to hook this up onto a low voltage, not high voltage, and um, I've got an oscilloscope right here. I actually got to Rob's one, the uh, 1104XE, still sitting on my, best, on my desk here, so I'm going to hook this up to it, and we shall fire that up, I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see I've got the uh, probe hooked up to the STS 1104XE, just on channel 1, um, I've got my 
required bench power supply hooked up in series mode onto the probe for the zero volt, well, yeah, zero volt and a positive connection there. Now those are set to be 62 volts DC. Okay, maximum the power supply can do is 62 volts in series mode. So I've got hooked onto the probe, and um, I've set up the input one to be 1,000 times probe. Um, I've got a band of lights on off. Um, DC coupling, so you can see the voltage change. And so I'll turn the power supply on, and we should see I've got a set of 20 volts per division. So I should see about three divisions change on here. Okay, so let's do it. There we go, three divisions change. And we're reading about 60.6 .6 volts. So, yeah, that's fine. That's looking okay. Um, insulation resistance. I wonder if I should check the insulation resistance. I'm not sure if I've got my tester here. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, it's pretty pretty good anyway so it's, it's doing that voltage is fine and um, on, on the scope here you can scale it, I don't know if you can see that but you can scale it 1 kilovolt, 2 kilovolt, 5 kilovolt, 10 kilovolt right absolutely maximum 10 kilovolt per division so um, that's based on, on a thousand times probe so you can measure some quite high voltages in theory um, I'm not quite sure I'd want to go there but uh, yeah, so yeah, that looks alright. I mean, that's going to be of use to someone, I'm sure. So, this one here, so it says 8 kilovolt DC, 16 kilovolt peak, 6 kilovolt OMS. Right, so that's the HVP08 probe. I should probably mention that too. There you go. Good shot just there. Right, so that's a nice little probe. I mean, if you're doing work on power supplies and you want to be careful not to blow your scope up, then it's probably worth a look for you. Here's another item which Rob has lent me. So differential probe. There's so much we think about getting myself too for some time, but um, they're quite expensive. So the um, comes with reasonably nice clips. You've got the shaped shaped jaws so they don't slip off things. And it's also got the uh, hook-on clips as well. All right. Not bad. I mean, they feel nice, strong tensions and on the springs and things like that. And uh, we've got a couple of leads in there. So it comes with a B and C cable, which goes to the scope. And a, um, it's a standard silicon 4mm uh, banana plug cable to go between the probe and the, and the, the actual crocodile clips we're going to use and um, it's nice silicon but you could use any cable I imagine um, so look at the manual I'm not sure what the price is on this thing I think it's probably you know, they're, f they're fairly expensive normally it's probably going to be a couple of hundred bucks at least I'd imagine if not a bit more um, information might be online somewhere actually but this one here is the DP25 so it's 1400 volt peak to peak 25 megahertz span width um, you can see the various options we've got here the various ones so up to 20 kilovolts 20 megahertz or up to the highest frequency is 100 megahertz that's 7 kV so um, and it's got the specs for each unit this is the DP25 so here we go 25 megahertz 3dB for attenuation 50 times or 200 times or 15 megahertz at, at 20 times because you've got these different attenuation settings on here so at 20 times you've got a, a lower bandwidth of 15 megahertz um, accuracy 22% I suppose that's not too bad and there's the other specs here you can read those yourself when you pause it and whatever you want to do so um, Max differential voltage 450 volts RMS. Right, the so max differential is DC and AC peak to peak, or 450 RMS. Right, so max voltage between each input terminal and ground is 600 volts RMS. So I have to watch out for that too. So there's, there's the sorts of things you need to be aware of. 
I'm going to do a little test on this. I'm not, not going to have anything anywhere near those voltages, so it's nowhere near that. Um, output impedance 50 ohms, so that's what you run, run to your scopes, so you know what to expect on there for actual voltage readings. Um, so, yeah, descriptions on how to use it. You can set up and, and use it pretty much. All right. So, you yeah, also because it's got these, these um, ratios here, you have to allow for that in order to work out the correct voltage readings. But I'd imagine if you're using a a probe multiplier on the input of a scope, you could have set it to that and it'd probably be right. I imagine. I'll find out. Okay, so that's enough of the manual part. I shall get this set up. Okay, so I've got the uh, unit set up here. I've just used my set of my own leads for this case. Just because I've got crocodile clips and I'm just clipping straight to my power supply leads, it's all just a bit easier. Um, but you know, I could have used the leads that came with it, but in my case, I just use my own. Now, this has got a 9 volt plug pack, that comes with it as well. 9 volt DC, 300 milliamp. It requires 200 milliamp max, but yeah, so it's plenty big enough. And um, you can see on the front here the maximum DC and the maximum AC ratings. So I'll bring this up here, you can see it. Okay, so it's just a nice little reminder on the front panel for which range you're using and what you can actually do. Alright, so maximum DC is plus or minus 70 volts. Okay, so again, I've still got my power supply running. I've got it running on um, 62 volts output, as I did just now with the high voltage probe. I've got my scope set up to do 20 times range. Um, well, 20 times, assuming 20 times probe, so I'm going to go 20 times on here. It should give me the correct voltage on scope here. Okay, so I'm all powered up. I've got to turn the power supply on. So I'll turn this on to 200 times first. Um, so power lights on, turn the power supply on, we have power, you can see the line move very slightly there. So if I go to 200 times first actually, that should give me a reasonable scale. Okay, 20 volts of division, yep, and I'm reading 62 volts right there. So that looks fine, alright, yeah, 200 times. So let's go um, 50 times, let's bring the scale down and change this to 50. Alright, we'll check that accuracy there as well. So this is now doing 25 volts of division instead. So that's slightly over and we'll get about 61 volts, so slightly out there in comparison to the times 200. What you should do is um, get my multimeter here and actually just quickly just probe the actual voltage and see what's coming out just to confirm the exact voltage which is coming out the power supply so let's just have a look at that and I can tell you exactly it should be 62 but yeah 62.03 right so yeah basically bang on 62 is what's coming out so it's out by one volt with that range so let's go um, times 20 let's drop the scale down times 20 set that to times 20 I always get the wrong way of these knobs. Always, even on my own scope. Always do it backwards. We'll just work the opposite way around from what I expect. Anyway, um, so times 20, and it's 40 volts of division right now. 20 volts of division. I'm getting 41.4 volts. Um, so yeah, that's within spec. Anyway, it's certainly within spec. If I go over range, it doesn't matter. So yeah, that works fine. So I'm within the maximum of this, as I say, it's 50, 70 volts maximum um, on the 20 times range. And I'm, so I'm putting 62 volts, so that's within the range of this, what I can do. It does have an over range warning on here. So if it does go over, it will, it will light that up and, and warn you that you better change it. Um, uh, okay, so that at least seems to work fine. I mean, that's obviously not earth referenced. Um, which is what you want. You want isolation on your scope, and um, so it's great for doing voltage measurements in that regard. Um, if you wanted to use like a oscilloscope probe, you probably have to adapt it to BNC or something like. That. Um, probably. Let's have a look. Not that one. We should have one here somewhere. Just trying to find it. I've got I've got one like this, which is the other way around. Um, Oh, it's in my other meter. That's why I can't find it. 
Okay, let's get it out of the meter. So you can get one of these adapters like this, so you might even just plug that in instead. Let's uh, unplug these. Oop, that folds a bit tight. There we go. It's all brand new, so it's a bit tight. And that way around. So, yep, standard spacing, no problem there. And um, so, yeah, if you wanted to, you can probably go um, use an oscilloscope probe onto that point, I'd imagine, instead, and hook it up that way. So, effectively, you, you know, in series with your scope, and it just works the same way. It's entirely likely you could do it that way, actually. Um, so, there's a handy word that just to have. Okay, um, what else can I say about this? Well, it's um, Cat 3 rated, 600 watts. Um, from either terminal, 600 volt insulation. On the back, yeah, no. Some basic specs here. If you're not, you can read it, I don't know. There you go, maybe you can read it now. Right, so, but that's a looks like a handy piece of gear to have. I mean, I'm actually very tempted to buy one, I have to say. Very tempted. So, uh, if you're ever worried about blowing up the front end of your scope because you're doing power supply work, you know, what if you're on switch mode power supplies or high voltage stuff where you, you want to scope it and see what's going on, this is the kind of thing you need. Um, this the kind of thing I should probably get. I don't scope power supplies, <laughs> I just don't do it. But um, if I had one of these, then I could do. So, yeah, that's nice. Uh, so, thanks for Towsac and Rob. Get this card for you. There you go. Tau Packer Technologies. Um, so that's chowtech.co.nz um, There's also on the EV blog forum um, He hangs out on there He's a Siglent distributor So um, You know You can see him in there too So So it's really nice Rob to lend me these bits of gear to do a review on I have a good relationship with Rob You know He, he lends me gear like this <laughs> So I can do reviews So thanks Rob So catch you later And subscribe and like And give a thumbs up And Click the bell icon, that kind of thing. Get started. Bye.